Hello, welcome on in. Corgi XP here, and I am super excited to start our series called Command Block Academy. This series of tutorials will be going over all about commands, command blocks, and their various usages. You can do so many things with commands and command blocks in Minecraft. It is super cool. So if you're ready to go, grab your notepad, hit that subscribe button, and let's go ahead and get started. So commands are run or are able to run if your world is set to allow commands or quote unquote cheats. This is normally set up already if you create a creative, you know, world. Or if you're in survival slash hardcore, you can actually set it by pressing escape in Java, open to LAN, and set allow commands to on. Uh, it's already creative. It's already on because it was already previously set up that way. But if again, if we were set up in survival or hardcore, we could then change allow commands to on uh, in Java. It won't prevent uh, achievements or advancements from being earned. So anyone can still earn those. However, in bedrock, if you do enable cheats through the world settings, when you press escape, it will disable achievements completely. So make sure in bedrock, if you are to do stuff like this, you are aware that no one can earn achievements unless you create your own achievements through the use of behavior packs. But this series is only going to focus on Java for now. I will create a separate series for bedrock in the future. So what are commands? Commands are essentially functions that allow the game to run certain actions. So for instance, slash help is a command to run a function, which gives us information about other commands that we can run. So for instance, let's do slash help say. What this will do is it'll now tell you what's required to be able to run the command of say. Anything that's required will be indicated by triangle brackets. So in order to use slash say, we need a message after that command. So if we do slash say, it'll automatically now tell us that we need a required message. So let's do hi there. Since say doesn't have what's called a selector field, it's always going to default to whoever executed that command, which is going to be myself, the player, because I'm the one running that command. So when we do this, you'll see how Corgi XP has said, hi there. The same thing is true if we were to literally just type it in as hi there. But what you'll notice is triangle brackets in this case, but regular brackets in this case, the regular brackets signify that this was run based off a command. This signifies that this is run from the chat. So it'll be the same username because I'm the one who did both commands, but it'll give you a different like signification of where that message actually came from, which is pretty interesting. So some commands have selectors where that'll tell it basically who what or where that command needs to be run. It'll have required fields such as items, and sometimes they'll have optional fields such as count. So for instance, the give command has all of those. If we do slash help give, you'll see that it has required targets. Targets for the give command is a list of different selectors. Item is a required field, and that will be any predefined item through the Minecraft namespace. So such as a bow, paper, something like that. Or if you were to create a data pack on Java or a uh, pack on Bedrock, you could actually create custom items, which is super cool. And then count, 
which you, is signified here by regular brackets, means it's optional. If you do not include count, it'll always give one of the specified item. Otherwise, if you put a count here, such as two, you'll get two of that specific item. So let's go ahead and give ourselves two diamonds. I want to be rich. So slash give. You'll notice now it automatically gives you a list of suggestions for that target selector. Excuse me. And you'll now see how there's different selectors. We're not going to go into this in detail in this video. We'll get into more details about selectors and attributes in next video. Uh, so for now, we're just going to use at S, which means current entity or whoever is executing that command. So that's always going to be myself or that current player. Next, it'll automatically give you a list of the required item because it is absolutely required that you have an item in that give command. So you can start typing what you want to start giving and it'll automatically give you the list of anything that has DIA in it. So you could select the entire Minecraft diamond if you wanted, or what you can always do is as long as it's a predefined item in this list through either a default Minecraft item or a data pack or a pack in Bedrock, you can actually just put in the item itself. And as you can see on diamond or on slash at S, it brings up a bracket next to it. That bracket signifies that you can have what's called an optional attribute towards that item or that selector. So for instance, if you wanted to check to see if at S, which is myself or the current entity is on a team is or has a specific tag, has a specific score on the scoreboard, stuff like that. You can then give myself something based on an optional criteria. Diamond, you could set a custom attribute to, such as if you were to put a diamond in an anvil and name it something different, you could actually just set it directly from here with the optional attributes. But again, we're not going to get into that in detail right now. We'll do that in our next video. So we'll just keep that as generic. And then finally, it brings you to the optional count. If we don't do a count, it'll only give me one diamond. But let's go ahead and give ourselves two diamonds. So you'll see now give at S, which is self diamond of count two. We now have two diamonds. I'm rich. I'm rich. Now. If you type a command, you only have a max of 256 characters, which includes spaces. And most of the time, if you're playing with other people, you don't want to have to keep typing in commands. Otherwise, it would be a pain in the butt. So, for instance, let's say you're playing a multiplayer, you know, RPG map, adventure map, something like that. You don't want to have to keep typing slash give Otherwise, you'd have to do it for every single player, and that's just not good. So what can you do in that case? You can use what's called a command block. However, as you can see in the default UI, you can't actually give yourself a command block from this. Otherwise, anyone playing in creative mode could potentially get one, which you don't want. So what you can do is give yourself that command block and again you could choose directly from this list or you can just type it in manually and you don't need the namespace if it's a predefined item and same thing with the command block you can set custom attributes to it but we're not going to get into that in detail right now so we'll just give ourselves that command block and you can now place it down as you can see command blocks have these arrows so especially if you are doing what's called a chain of command blocks, those arrows need to be in the same direction as that chain. So for instance, let's say you have a chain of three command blocks. 
you need to make sure that that chain is in the exact same direction each time if let's say this one was facing up this way the chain would go like this it would start here go here and then look up this way to do something this one would never get activated because the chain breaks by going up this way not this way so you have to make sure that these arrows are facing the correct direction especially if they're chained together so you have three types of command blocks you have an impulse one which is basically a one-time use command you have a chain block which uh, will happen in chain successfully or unsuccessfully depending on what happens previously to it and the setting you do as unconditional or conditional and then you have a repeat which repeats on an ongoing basis so let's go ahead and show you what a repeat does first uh let me get a lever real quick too because i'll show you that you can either keep it powered or unpowered or you can just keep it active the entire time so let's go ahead and do our say hi command what will happen is if we keep it as needs redstone say hi it'll repeat but it has to be powered on in order to repeat it so we'll click on done notice how nothing is happening because nothing is currently powering that needs redstone repeater you could put in a block of redstone which will do it and as you can see hi is being said multiple multiple times you could use a lever to do it so after the chat window disappears in a second you'll now see that it keeps going on so our repeater will always repeat itself every single tick depending on your settings so if it needs redstone you either need a lever to be powered on or you need a redstone source to keep it active otherwise if you just keep it always active it'll always run every single tick so let's go ahead and change that so it doesn't spam the chain has a few different options i would always recommend keeping chain as always active because depending on where that chain is so for instance let's say you have a chain of three let's make this a chain let's make this chain if this one has needs redstone and this one needs redstone but this one is always active what will happen is this one when it runs will power this one however this one will not power this one so you'll only technically get two of the working commands in that chain if this is set as needs redstone in order for this one to function you would always have to keep it powered with a redstone block a lever like in the previous example uh a ongoing chain of redstone such as a redstone dust and torch and that'll keep this active now if this is set as needs redstone so now all three will correctly trigger what you could potentially also do is set it up this way where you now have this as an impulse and you can use a redstone repeater from the block like that because the repeater will take the signal from this and repeat it out however you cannot do something like this where you take that won't work you need to have it as set up as a repeater like that but that's just kind of silly so what i would recommend is keeping it like this and change these to always active that way all three will trigger based on whatever happens previous to it so let's go ahead and set up a quick chain or let's change this to impulse let's change this to needs redstone and we'll do say hi we'll change this one to chain always active 
we'll keep it unconditional for now i'll explain that in a moment and let's do say there so what will happen is now this will trigger after this runs successfully so let's go ahead and give ourselves a button we'll just use a button for this one and what we'll now see is it will say okay but notice how when i click the button it powered this because this is directly next to it let's get rid of that so that doesn't happen <laughs> hi there perfect what this means unconditional is this will always trigger no matter what if this triggers or doesn't trigger if this is conditional this always has to be true this will always be true because say hi is an accurate command so it'll always run correctly but if let's say i had a wrong thing in here such as that this will not function because that didn't work see so if we fix this keep that as conditional this will always be true now hi there that works perfect so you have repeaters you have chains and you have one time impulse commands super super cool you could set impulse commands to give you items so similar to how we typed that give command we can do give the different selector in this case you could use at s however the best option to use in a command block especially if you're giving something is to either use at p which is nearest player at a which is all players or at e which is all entities if you use at a or at e unless you want to give it to everyone no matter what then i would recommend custom attributes otherwise in this case for basic needs let's just do nearest player we'll give diamond and let's give ourselves six more so give at p which is nearest player diamond for a total of six so now what will happen is if we're near this command block it'll give us six more diamonds it'll give us six more diamonds it'll give us six more diamonds super 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 cool i think that is good enough for today's episode in next episode we will go ahead and go over all about selectors all about custom attributes and we'll start doing some more advanced uh give commands eventually throughout the series we'll go over some different like summon commands we'll go over scoreboards and stuff like that and i'm very excited to also tie this into two other series that we're creating called data pack dash which will go over the creation of a data pack and then we're also going to be working on our own adventure map called the trials of eternia uh, and that trials of eternia will go over everything about commands data packs and utilizing everything we've learned in this series and the data pack dash series to create a very own adventure map so if you are interested in seeing all of those again hit that subscribe button and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye, everybody.